What's up YouTube? Today I'm showing my assistant Emily how to replace a jack on a trailer. This is her trailer. So me and her are going to work together. She's going to do most of the work and I'm just going to direct her while she does it and maybe show her some examples of how to do certain things. So right now she's working on figuring out how to use a torch. I kind of gave her the basis of it. She's a very quick learner, so I'm sure she's going to get it really quick. So you just want barely crack that acetylene open and then strike it, okay? Okay, now hit your oxygen just a little bit. There you go, now acetylene. Hit the acetylene up. Now oxygen. All right, now hit the trigger. All right, now turn up the oxygen. Turn up the trigger. There you go, it's ready to cut. So like I said, stay into the, yup, into the jack metal. Yeah, get back at the top, wait for it to get hot. All right, now hit the trigger. Start pulling it down. Oh. You need to get, you, you, you need to turn that torch into the uh, jack a little bit more. Into the jack? Yeah, you need to get your hand. There you go, straight down. You got it. There you go, wash that. You want to wash it out, basically. So, turn it a little bit towards the trailer. So you see that spot right there? Yeah. That hot spot? That's what you want to cut right there. Turn it a little bit more towards that. Yep, there you go. Now pull the trigger and pull down. There you go. Now you're getting it. Now you got it. Oh, too fast. Okay. Yep, right there. You had it right there. You don't have to move it around. Just there you go. You're getting it. There you go, now you got it. All right, I think you cut it all the way. Let's look. Here, turn the torch off. Let's see. I think I did it. Once I did it, I really think I did it. <laughs> yeah, I think you cut it, yeah, it looks good. There you go. All right, now hit it the opposite way. I'm gonna hit this. That's okay, just throw it on the ground then. Okay. Hit it hard on the top. There, you put your body more into it, so like it's like kind of twist yourself more when you swing that hammer. There you go. Hit it from the other side again. There you go. Here, hold on, stop. So while she was hitting it, I realized that the crankshaft on the old jack was hitting against the trailer. So I just asked her to give me the torch and let me go ahead and cut it. Striker. Okay. Alright, so I'll do this part because this is a little more. Gotta be a so little what more are you going to do? I'm going to wash the welds off. Okay. God damn it. Here, I'm going to show you a trick real quick. If you got an open okay. flame. Oh, cool. Instead of using the striker. Yeah. Again, the grinder out, which you totally can. Okay. It's a little quicker if you're doing the torch. Okay. Because I'm okay with the torch. I ain't no torch Norris. People are gonna be roasting me about my straw hat for doing this. Don't do this at home, kids. I'm kind of retarded.
I'll finish it with a grinder. So you'll do that part. So we're getting Emily set up with a flat disc right now. She's brought her own grinder. She has her own PPE. Uh, the reason I like to use a flat disc in this situation once most of the metal is gone so that you have less of a chance to dig in with a grinding stone. <laughs> What Emily's doing here is feeling for the high spot, seeing if there's any more to grind. And when it gets down to bare metal, sometimes it's hard to tell if you have a high spot without feeling. The angle I got the grinder at. Yeah. Now put weight on it. I'm on one knee and I'm pushing into it. Yeah. Now there's a fly hammer. Okay. So you see how that's got that crack in it? Yeah. Watch for that, because then that, that, see, that saved us, you know, probably 30 seconds there. Mm -hmm. And you know, this can get ground even more yeah. if you want it to, but it's smooth. Okay. It'll be fine. If you do need to get it flush, and the reason is, is you want that. Thing to go right up. Yeah. So go ahead and put some pressure into this thing and move it up okay. and down. You see how I was working it, yeah. and you seen the angle I had it at. You kind of yeah, have it like almost flat. Yeah. Okay. You know, you don't want to grind, you drag your nut, okay. but you want to. You want to get some pressure on it and you want to have as much surface contact as you can, okay? Okay. All right, thank you. All right, so Emily got this thing all prepped out. It looks good. Our next step now is for her to prep the back of the new jack. All right, so set that thing up. Um, I would put it in my vise on the back of the truck so you ain't bent over. Okay. Figure out which side is going to be the back. Right here, because this has got to be in the front, and then this has got to go side to side. Okay. So this has got to be the back. Okay, well then go ahead and set that up in the vise. And then grind the, the paint off. Got it? Maybe. Are those big enough? Yeah, and then okay. go now wrap go around down. the edge, yep, and then you want to come about to about half inch down. So okay. about to the middle of that. Okay. Kinda. Okay. Hold on, Emily. Let's do it. Sorry to me. Yeah, there should be plenty. All right, cool. Let's right. get it posted up, okay? Where are you gonna put your ground? Look about what's tied into. This looks well, like it's it. welded down here. You could, you can do it up here. You could do it right here. Um, I would try to do it in a spot that's inconspicuous. That's what I always try to do when I put when I grind my grounds. Why not right here? Right uh, there? Wait, you, no, not right there. there but on the grab? other side. Right here. Yeah, I mean we could do it there. I mean, that's a little in the way, in my okay. opinion. And the other thing is, is you got, well, yeah, you could do it right there. You got something to grab onto. Is it going to, now do you, I don't think it's going to be in your way, but would you think that's going to be in your way while you're trying to weld? No, yes, it right would. Here? It would, yes. Okay. So maybe try to look for a further point. Maybe right, look right here. Yeah. Okay. So go ahead and ground that up then. Okay. And then we'll go ahead and we'll use that as our ground. So that's another thing I always look to do when I'm working on a customer's trailer is I look for an inconspicuous spot to grind. Okay. So that way... If we can't coat it, maybe I don't have the right color spray paint, what have you, that you're not gonna see it. Up here in Montana, rust isn't as big of an issue as it is down in Florida, but you also need to be aware of that. You should try to keep coating materials with you at all times, so that way you can coat the welds when you're done. Some customers insist on painting themselves. Those are my favorite customers. <laughs> Back it up the rest of the way. So you see why I did it like that? Because that was the easiest way to do it. Yeah, okay. Get an even 
same gap on both sides. Okay. So before I tack it, I'm going to ask you if this looks even. So I'll, I'll tack it because that's a little bit of a pain in the ass. And then you're, and then I'll put one weld on for you. But you always weld first, then grease because it'll burn the grease off. Okay. Like what happened? Yep. Okay. So today the welding rod we're going to be using is Polaris A. I'm going to start at 75 amps. This is really a repair rod. It's a little bit overkill for what we're doing here. 7018 would more than suffice, but for the purposes of showcasing the rock mount rod, I'm gonna go ahead and use it. Uh, this is the first time I've broken into this pack, as you can tell. So we're gonna see how she does. As you can see, Emily's a very attentive student. She watches me every single time I weld. And that's kind of part of her job description is just to watch and learn. And uh, learn quickly, she does. side it doesn't really matter okay. whatever you're more comfortable with let it build and then move right. so you're gonna be like you're gonna don't don't you don't really want to time you just want to watch the puddle build okay so I'll watch okay. you and if I see you sitting too long I'll say move okay All right. the rhythm right see what you were doing is you were you were digging into this which I'd rather you dig into this than this because okay. there's you know shit moves in here right. but you were just you were spending too much time in this so 
Let me cap it and I'll show you what I mean, okay? All right. Well, let's actually, before we cap it, let's show everybody your weld. Because that's a pretty good first 7018 uphill. So this is Emily's very first 7018 uphill. She's never ran 7018 uphill. She's only ran it in a flat, horizontal position. So it's pretty good. I know all the old timers will appreciate that. You young kids don't know the fucking difference. So that's her very first one. And that's 10 years of experience. Now, again, this is the rock mount rod. Uh, this is 7018 over here. So I would say that's pretty fucking good for her first one. But I'm gonna cap over it just to show her what she did wrong. So you have let me build and then I'm moving. So you see how steady I'm moving? Yeah. You see how it's kind of in a metronome? One Mississippi, 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 one Mississippi. And that's not necessarily how you're always gonna do it. You gotta watch the puddle, but it's just a good way to when you first start. I mean, you see when I struck off how I pulled? Yeah. It's because I intentionally wanted to leave a divot. And the reason I wanted to leave a divot is because now I should be able to make my next well blend. So, of course, I'm going to wire wheel that before I restrike. So, it doesn't look that great. But that's because I was trying to fill Nine, yeah. Yeah, your stuff in. So start around here. So start, yeah, start where you're comfortable. Okay. And then, uh, just like I said, just very small weave motions. We were just a little too exaggerated last time. Okay. Oh, let it build, let it build. You ain't got it connected yet. There you go, now you can move. Better. Push your rod a little bit more. There you go. There you go. It, no, you had it a second ago. There you go. Push your rod in. There you go. That's what you want. Move. Yep. Push your rod in more. You see longer arc. Alright. Yep. That's fine. You want to keep it up even more? No, no. You, that's actually a pretty good weld. Well, that one's got a lot better. Yeah, it looks a lot better too. Here, go ahead and wire it. Yeah, it ain't going nowhere, Emily. Okay. You ain't gonna be able to wiggle it. Here's Emily's second uphill 7018 weld. I think that's pretty fucking good for her second one ever. Nice job, Emily. Not, so the mistake you're making is your long arc. So what it is, it's, it's it, you're, you got pretty decent timing, but you need to get into the puddle more. See how you kind of burnt through the jack right there? So, I mean, that's not a big deal. We can fill that in, but what you wanna do is you wanna strike on this piece of metal. You want to sit there, let it fill until you see the puddle fill, and then slowly drag it over here. Let this fill, and then come right back up to here, and then pull it down. So now, because you put that hole in it, we're going to do more of a... Uh, and we're going to strike here on the thicker metal, mm -hmm. and then we're going to come over, almost straight over to the thinner metal. Let it sit for a second, just a second. Come back up, and we're going to do more of a Z okay. now, because you did that. Right. So. That's basically that difference is I'm just I know how to read the puddle. So what you'll do is you'll strike here, okay. let it sit, let it fill, pull it over here, let it fill, and then come back, and then come back, come back. Because you got to remember this is thinner. Yeah. So you got to put let you want less heat input into this. You want more heat input into this because this is probably about quarter inch. Yeah. Yeah, it's about quarter inch. So to burn through this is not going to be likely. It's going to be more likely that you burn through the the, the eighth inch steel here. Yeah. Okay. All right, go ahead and uh, do it. Just tap the tip of that off before you try to strike it because it's gonna make it easier. And then just look at it and you see bare metal. Okay. I was gonna tell you to stabilize yourself, but you're I'm thinking this. Okay. For or me- Or do you think I need to do both? Stabilize it, it, both. If, if, it's more, if that's better for you, so if you're more comfortable, better. that's yeah. what it comes down to is how comfortable are you. All right, yeah, this is better. Okay, go ahead. Get back in there and go that puddle. Get back into the gap. There you go. Oh, a little more time in the gap. Just a second more. There you go, go. Quarter arc. Quarter 
hard. Slow down. Slow the arc. There you go. Slow the arc. Make it burn away from your eyes, you know? I think you might have burned through again. No, no, you're good. Alright, go ahead and knock the slide off. Uh, do you want to do this side or do you want me to do that? Let's have you do it. I don't want to do too many more getting into that. I really don't want to screw up the no, jack. No, you're not, you're not going to screw like it up. It was like a $200 jack. So. No, you're not going to screw it up. Don't worry. I really don't want to ruin it. I'm going to switch back to the Polaris A. I get the names mixed up. They're so weird. I'm used to 70, 18, 60, 10 and you know, all that shit. So we're going to go ahead and do that. We're going to run another one. Nice tight arc, yeah. and that's that'll tight. Nice. Yeah, that'll be a nice weld when you have a nice tight arc. Yeah. So it's not the perfect weld, yeah. but it, we have it. You know, we, we maintained a nice tight arc all the way up, yeah. and we were able to get a decent, a decently even profile. You know, even with a rod that I'm not super familiar with. If we were on a job, I would grind these and make you go over them, and then we would just keep doing it until you got it 100%. But this is your trailer, and you know, I'm not worried about it, you're not worried about it, so. All right, so um, let's finish this off by painting it. So here's Emily's two wells. Not perfect, but I, they'll hold. I'm not worried about those going anywhere. The trailer jack's not just gonna fall off. And then um, over here, this was the Polaris A. This was also the Polaris A. I have a little work to do to really get this figured out. I think that the waterproof coating they put on the Polaris A is what makes it a little bit different of an art characteristic. And then there's my 7018, looks pretty okay. Um, and then, then that was uh, Polaris as well right there. So um, this is all 7018 Emily worked with because she's familiar with that rod. But we're gonna get this thing cleaned up and then we're gonna paint it. If you enjoyed this video, Go over to mountainmetal.com, get yourself a hat, get yourself a sticker, a t-shirt, do what you can, and enter to win this welder automatically. Every dollar you spend gets you an automatic entry. You can also win for free. You just got to mail me a postcard, let me know why you deserve to win, and that'll get you 10 automatically free entries. The P.O. Box is on the website, mountainmetal.com. Also, I'd like to give a quick shout out to Rock Mount and their Polaris A. This is really a great product. This is like 7018 on steroids. This stuff here, you can use this in the rain, you can dip it in the water and then go immediately to welding. That is the difference between this. The other difference is the elongation. It has a higher elongation, which is basically how much you can bend the weld before it breaks, which if you know 7018, it also already has great elongation. And then this has a 95,000 PSI tensile strength. So it's a stronger rod, it's water resistant, and it has higher elongation. So consider this the next time you're doing a repair, okay guys? The next thing we're gonna do, I don't normally do this, but this is Emily's trailer, we're gonna make it as nice as we can. We're gonna put a little acetone and we're gonna wipe down all of the soot, all the bullshit that's around this thing. And then we're gonna tape it off and we're gonna give it a decent little paint job. So that way it looks good. And when she shows up to her horse shit, people, uh, Look at it and go, oh, that's a nice job somebody did. And she can tell them that she did it. So you don't really want to get this shit on your hands. Hence why I'm doing it. I'm not letting Emily do it. So I really don't give a fuck. About myself, please. See how I'm doing that? Mm-hmm. That way I don't get runs. So 
So sometimes I do end up painting customer shit. And when I do, I want to give them the highest quality product they can. Oh, I just oversprayed a little. It's okay. What paint color are you going to paint this thing anyway? The trailer? Black? Yellow. Yellow? Vintage yellow. Why yellow? That's my favorite color. Yellow is your favorite color? Yep. God. <laughs> God. I fucking hate yellow. Mom thinks it's a good idea. Huh? Mom thinks it's a good idea. Yeah, women like ugly colors. But I make no guarantees with paint because I ain't a painter. That's a different trade. Right. On coating, nice dusted on coating. It's almost matte colored. Yeah, I noticed that when I started painting, so that's why I did the whole Actually thing. Actually, got a paint. Yeah, not perfect. But it should but be dry before I leave. Yeah, it definitely will be. All right, guys, there's our final product. Looks pretty good. You happy, Emily? I am. I'm really happy. <laughs> Sweet. All right, guys. I'm Melt Metal Anthony. If you liked what you saw here today, like, subscribe, share. If you didn't, you can go fuck yourself, okay? <laughs>